Hey, Newbie Dan here. I've got two extremely easy ways to align your fence to your miter track, and they work on any table saw. But wait, there's more! And for today only, if you hang around till the end, you'll get two, count them two, additional bonus methods for free. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is so stupid. Anyway, if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. <laughs> Before aligning your fence, you should align your blade to your miter track, as shown in my table saw tune-up video, but that's up to you. This first method is probably the easiest, even if it's not the most exact. Put a combination square in your miter track, pressed against the edge of the track. Then lock your fence next to the ruler, and slide the combination square along the track, keeping it pressed against the edge of the miter track. If the fence moves away from the ruler, or it pushes the ruler away, then your fence isn't aligned properly. So adjust your fence's alignment and try again. If you have trouble locking your fence down right next to the ruler, like I do, try locking your fence down first, then extend the ruler to the fence. This method is much more exact. It requires either a miter gauge or a crosscut sled that's not so wide you can't put your fence on also. In either case, there should be little, if any, side-to-side -side play. You'll also need an indicator gauge, either analog or digital. There's links in the description below. If you're using a sled, depending on what kind of fence it has, you might be able to attach the gauge to the sled's fence. Mine's too tall for that. So if you can't do that, or you're using a miter gauge, you can cut a piece of scrap wood, and then you can screw the gauge to it and clamp it to the sled or miter gauge. If you use SPAC screws or GRK screws, you can attach and remove the gauge using the same screw in the same hole many, many times. Slide the fence over and clamp it down, then zero the gauge. Slide it along the fence and see if the gauge changes much. In my case, I have a little too much play in my sled, so I have to keep it pressed against the side of the miter track before I get reasonable results. If the fence is off, adjust the alignment and try it again. This first bonus method is similar to the first method. Once it's set up, it's probably actually quicker to use than the first. Cut a runner for your miter track, but cut it taller than normal. If you don't know how to cut a runner, I'll give you a quick demo in a moment. I'm using 3 quarter inch plywood, so it extends above the table, like this. Move your fence over to the runner and lock it down, then check for gaps. If you see a gap at the end, your fence is towed out. Then put your fence on the other side and lock it down. This time if you see a gap at the end, your fence is towed in. In either case, adjust your fence's alignment and try it again. If you don't know how to make runners, I have a video on the subject, but here's a quick overview. Cut some stock a little wider than your miter track. Move the fence in slightly, usually by tapping on the edge, although I have to use a jig for this. Trim a little of the end of your runner and see if it fits in your miter track. If it doesn't, tap the fence over a little more and try again. This is called sneaking up on a cut. If you make it too narrow, just turn the runner around and start again on the other end. Once it's the right width, cut the entire runner and make sure it fits. Sometimes you have to trim it one more time. As I said earlier, for more details, see my video on the subject. The link's in the description below. This last method was recommended by a viewer, and I haven't tried it. On Amazon, there's this product from Woodpeckers called a Precision Woodworkers Tool Saw Gauge. It fits in your miter track and has a gauge, so it works like method number two. There's also this one from iGaging called a Digital Saw Gauge. It's cheaper, but its reviews aren't as good. Personally, of these two choices, I'd spend more money and get the one from Woodpeckers, even though I like a lot of iGaging's products. I've got links for both of these in the description below if you want to try them out. And if you do, please leave a comment and let us know what you think. In fact, if you try any of these methods or have other suggestions, please leave a comment. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks! Check out the description for links to products seen in this video. Just scroll down. Click Show More, and scroll down until you see the links. And if you like what I do here, click that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that bell to get notified about new videos. Thanks!